Hi, welcome to my shed. My name is Paul Hopewell. I want to say thank you to all subscribers to my channel for your continued support. I also suggest to those who've just found my channel to subscribe and click on the bell icon to get my latest releases as soon as they're published. This video is an update to the previous video called Cutting Gears on a Shaper, subtitled Making the Tool. I suggest that if you haven't seen that video, view that one first fully to understand why I'm doing this video. At the end of the last video I mentioned I had 3,500 holes to drill. It was more like 3,700 holes. You also saw me cut my first gear from an aluminium blank sporting a 14mm borehole. However, I did notice a couple of things that could have caused issues if I was to make a steel gear and this video shows how I address the situation. The 14mm section of the spindle is likely to bend given the cutting forces from the shaper. So I devised an adjustable stopper to counteract this to prevent, hopefully, any possibility of this happening. By fitting a strong but removable section of angle plate fitted with a lockable restraining bolt. This is a bit of 90mm angle plate and it's quite a sturdy piece of cut off that should do the job quite nicely. Offering the two parts together gave me an idea of where to place the stopper screw. In fact I decided to put three positions in the back of the plate, two at 8mm and one of 10 The bottom of the angle plate I chose to put two M10 bolts to hold it all together. These two M10 bolts are a bit close together but I haven't got a lot of room to work in. I'm going to make another 50 tooth gear like I did the last one, using steel rather than aluminium this time. And to help prevent it moving I'm going to use the top 8mm threaded hole with a bolt in it to provide the thrust resistance. This is a cap head screw with a brass cover to prevent scuffing on the side of the gear. I've also changed a few things. I took the bolt out of this clamp and fitted a wing nut. In the connecting rod I cut an arc out of the lower side to accommodate the nip knot when the smaller diameters are being cut. I've also found that the smallest PCD I can accommodate is 46mm and not 40mm as I mentioned in the previous video. I have removed the play from each end of this tie rod for the moment but I'm going to replace this rod with two small ball end trap rod ends and an adjustable tie bar. The nip nut flange has also been reduced from the back face to allow the nut on the PCR adjuster to pass behind it without interference. This PCR adjuster through bolt now has a 2mm hole drilled through the cap head to assist with locking and unlocking this nut. I've now mounted the 77.9 by 8mm thick steel blank onto the 14mm spindle and locked it into place. To prevent you falling asleep I've sped this section of video up whilst cutting the first tooth. What I've now found is that the lowest feed rate of my shaper is 0.2mm per stroke which is 8 thou, which is a bit aggressive for such a thin gear blank. Nevertheless, the end result is still pretty impressive. From my observations, I would note that very thin blanks tend to flex rather than the spindle. I would also, with hindsight, fit a bigger collar behind the blank to reduce any sort of deflection that could be introduced by the cutting action. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. <laughs>